Hey, we're back. It cuts off after an hour, but you have to see this. Look at how cute they are. This little pancake. Say hi, pancake. Oh, I disturbed him. He's probably going to go pee somewhere now. And that's coconut. So, if you're just tuning in, I'm painting this scene for the prompt bar. And it's our own bar here. Look how shiny. And I stuck this super bright lamp that's shining right in my face because I love backlighting. And that's just the price you have to pay. Here's my setup. I'm sitting on a little stool. Got my Soltec easel. And here's some paper. Um, this is Dick Blick Cold Press. It's a watercolor block. Let me get this set up. All right. So I've got a lot done already. Um, I wasn't planning on going this far into it, but you all seem to be enjoying it. So why not? Going in and adding a little more of these lights, which I meant to preserve a little more than I actually did. I'm gonna put in hints of these oranges that I'm seeing. Adding all these warm and cool tones and putting them right side by side each other gives this really luminous effect. Puppy is hiccuping and it's really cute. I don't know if you can hear it, you probably can't. Squinting, looking for spots to put some of this color. I just want little bits. Oh man, that's tough. I got followers, um, I would say mostly just from posting every day. And that's a pretty common thing that I hear from other artists too, is just be consistent. You know, don't post a bunch of stuff, like if you have a, I don't know, like for example, I have a comic page that I do as well and I kind of separated the two because people that want to see my fine art don't necessarily find me very funny and, or they just don't want to see, you know, ugly drawings alongside my fine art paintings, which is perfectly fine. So you kind of have to tailor your, your page a little bit. And then 
just post as much as you can without letting the quality suffer. It's definitely not easy though. What I wouldn't do is what a lot of people do and they try to like advertise on my page and I honestly just find that super annoying and obnoxious. So please don't do that to me. <laughs> I love helping people when I can and I'm happy to offer advice, but um, you kind of have to do your homework. Don't just try to hop on the coattails of someone else, really. Feel free to ask me questions. I sometimes get a little focused on my painting. gouache it's my huge I really love it I'm not tired of it yet yeah it's gouache That's awesome. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, a nice cup of green tea. And let's see, how do I find a versus oils or acrylic? Well, I used to be mostly an oil painter and I loved oil painting. I, I miss it actually, and I wanna get back into it. But I am a very messy painter and it's not the best medium for messy painters. So, um, gouache is great for people that can't seem to keep a clean area. And I like, uh, I like using gouache because I can go into like fancy establishments and paint and not freak out about ruining their carpet or something. So mainly, I use it because it's fun and easy to clean. Which might not be the most interesting answer, but it's the most honest one. All oh, the sunlight's coming out now, it's changing all the colors. Can you see it? It's kind of brightening up.
I'm going to try to define these areas a little better. And these negative shapes here where the walls are, are really useful in cutting out the silhouettes of a shape. Queen silhouettes are important. Adding a little bit of these highlights. Since the light is coming right here, this part is pretty bright. <laughs> I've done my job. What's funny about the glass is if you look up close, I'll bring you in. It's seriously such a mess. Look at that. I try to keep it pretty loose. And... You know, by kind of sitting farther back and working, you know, with my arms stretched out a bit, it, it helps keep it pretty loose and painterly. But the shapes are very simple. There's not a lot going on. I'm going to clean my palette again. It's important to take breaks. Take a couple of minutes and not look at your piece. Because once you look at it again, you'll probably be more likely to see any errors or drawing problems. Ah, oh, good. Thanks, Jenny. It's good to know. All right. There's a couple of small details that I want to do still. label here. And this color is kind of carried out on the bottom and down through here. I can't tell if this 
change just because it's lighter out or what, but I kind of like it, so I'm going to put it in. A little bit of orange highlights here. This is uh, this color because it's reflecting from here. I think it's kind of important to know what's going on and why that color is in its place. It's helped me a lot. this little bubble here. I should have a mall stick, but I don't. So sometimes I just use my arm as a rest for my other arm. Paint's feeling pretty dry. Might have to spray it soon. And again, this this is color that's reflecting from here. A little bit of this yellow. And there's a little bit of yellow. glass. These glasses are really colorful. Got so many things going on. highlights uh, yes this is gouache I'm almost done. Trying to look at the painting in the um, iPad video to kind of see how terrible the drawing is. But one trick that you can do, which a lot of you probably already know about, but take your painting, 
flip it upside down. And I can see this glass is kind of wonky. Um, I need to fix this area. It's kind of curving up this way. And these are looking all right. I might want to straighten this edge. Flipping it upside down really helps a lot. And I always have problems with these ellipses. But again, it also gives it a little bit of character, so I don't hate it. But I do want to fix this part, I think, and then this part. So let's figure out what's working. I think this shape is all right, but this I want to bring out a little bit. And let's cut this, let's say about here. I just want to round it out. Darken this a bit. Ooh. I got a little bit of phthalo on something and now it's forever in my brush. drawing these lines and kind of imagining them as like a point of symmetry and seeing like where everything's going wrong. Again, let's figure out what works. I think this side is a little too long. And trim it a little bit. Um, the surface I'm painting on is a Blix cold press block and I'm going to post the video on my stories and you can go back and watch through and you'll see at some point I show you the back side. I'm going to call it done pretty soon. 
just because I'm finding myself getting a little too nitpicky. And I don't want to take away from that overall loose feeling. There's a bit of reflective light here. Bring in some of this orangey color. Lights back out. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I feel like I've, I keep getting the feeling like I'm getting sick, but not quite. It's pretty annoying. I wish it would just get over with. Do one final pass of highlights. Hey Roz, what time is it over there? <laughs> Thank you, lame cactus. I have very loud sneezes. Can't help it. I don't understand how people can have little tiny little cute squeaky sneezes. I just can't control myself. Alright, so another pass of thick white mixed with a tiny bit of lemon yellow. Getting all the spots that I really want to pop. things over here. Lots of little sparkles on these glasses. say it's kind of a cross between acrylic and watercolor yeah it's super fun to use it has the ability to be reactivated and lifted up like regular watercolor and um, it's opaque like acrylics so you don't have to be super picky about planning things out Hi, 
how do I keep my colors from being muddy? So I, I am not super picky about keeping everything super clean, but I do try to clean my palette every now and then. Like I've taken a couple of breaks during this painting and taken time to scrub off my palette of any built up paint that is gonna mix up and get muddy. Like I am now. And sometimes if I'm doing a larger piece, I will clean my water cup a couple of times, but I'm really a pretty messy painter and I find that not being super picky helps um, almost unify the palette a little bit. The point is you want certain colors to be very clear and clean. So I started with the wash underneath, which is a Sprite Yellow, and I tried to leave a little bit of that, but if you have a lot of desaturated and almost muddy colors around it, it almost makes those pure colors pop even more. But with that said, I also think that gouache is just um, pretty good about keeping your colors pure compared to oil painting. I don't know if that answered your question, but I'm going to show you my palette again. And you can tell that, um, and look how not clean it is. It's not perfect. I'm not very picky about keeping everything super separated. But I do refill these quite a bit as they start to empty. And I did just clean my palette. So one last look. I'm about done. I might do a couple touches after this, but it's overall pretty done. Overall, and there it is up there. Thank you all for watching. It was really fun and you're really helping me kind of learn to speak my own thoughts. So I really appreciate it. And if anyone ever has any questions, I'm always happy to answer them. Maybe just not the constant question of what kind of paint do you use. But thanks again, everyone. It was fun.